Hello, it's me again. We're going to talk about how to navigate our way around this this rhombic dodecahedron, this four-layered thing. Um, it's not at all unlike doing a supercube, 4x4 four four supercube. As a matter of fact, it is exactly like doing a 4x4 four four su supercube. So I invite you to look at how that's done first before trying this because it's really exactly the same way. The only thing that I'm going to modify a little bit is how to deal with the parity situation at the end. So if you can imagine that this is like a four by four and this is your middle, these are your um, edge pieces, your edge center pieces, and these are your corner pieces. If you can just keep that in mind, and um, then that should navigate your way through it. So just start lining up the centers the way that you would do a super cube. So we're starting off with, let's get some easy colors to deal with, Here's a red and a lime green. So I'm just going to start pairing reds that might make sense with this. And this is all very intuitive. Bring this over here and I'll bring this down. And really this is just a matter of playing around with it. If you've done enough times you know what, what colors are paired with what. So here's a lime green. Just going to find myself another lime green. There's one here, but that's not going to... I'm not going to be able to bring that to this area here. So here's another lime green here. So move that into place here, here, and here. All right, so not too bad. Red, red, green, green. So here's another uh, light purple. So what I'm looking for is a light purple and a gray. Does it exist? Light purple and a gray. And I'm going to say probably, probably not. There's a light purple and a white, close, but uh, but no cigar. So we, you just keep searching for colors that might make sense. So after fiddling around a little bit, I've got the red, red, I've got a blue, blue, and I've got a lime green. So I need to see if there's a light purple and a lime green. And there's one right here. So we'll move that into position. And this is just a matter of finagling, moving this around. I need to pair this with this. So I'm just going to set this up over here. And bring this around, around here, back and down. Okay, so here's what one side looks like. Now from here it gets a little easier because I don't have to keep hunting. So. Here's a blue. I just find one more blue, which is here. And this is the only other one that it pairs with. So I'll find the other blue, which is here. So I'm going to want to move this down to here. So bring it down. Turn it to bring it out of the way. And bring it back so that this comes back. Put this back into place. And all the other colors kind of fall in. So the general strategy is I'm going to be solving all these centers and then we're going to move on. But we got to figure out how to do the last two centers, which I'm sure you found to be a little difficult. So now I'm going to look for the white, another white one, and here's a white one over here. And I'll just move that into position and see what shakes out. So if this is white and this is burgundy, I'm going to have to look for a green one here and a burgundy. So green and burgundy. Green and uh, right there. So I'm going to take this out of this field of action for a little bit, move this down, and then move this back across here and down. So now I have the green and burgundy here and the other burgundy here. So I'm free to move these into position. So I'm going to move this down. Actually, it's the uh, green and white. Sorry about that. So I've got the green and white over here and the burgundy here. So I'm just going to be trying to put these into position. I'll move this out of the way. Bring it here. Back and down. And then I'm just going to move this into position. Back here. So really, it's just making sure that my patterns go back. So now I'm going to move this down into here and rotate it into position. So put it in, rotate 180 degrees, and bring it back. 
So that's pretty good. Two middles here, one here. This is lined up, and the whole key is that when you're solving these things, you want to get them all lined up. So what I'm going to naturally do is go for this one here. I'm going to look for the red one. Well, here's a red one here. So I'll just move it into position. That would mean down, rotate, up, to make sure this is put back in place. So I've got the red. I'm going to look for the other red one. The other red one is right over here. So it's just a matter of moving that back into place here. Here, I'll rotate here. Just kind of getting used to putting things back into back into place from before. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna move this in like that. Position that there. Move this here. Position it here so I can move this into place twice, so one, two, rotate, one, two. Oh, rotated it wrong. There we go. One, two. All right, so that's back in place. We're just going to keep doing that. What I'm going to do is solve all the middles and then come back to it. Just as an example, as we're dealing with the last three centers, I know that these are silver, and I've got green here, and I've got blue here. So just to pair them up, I know that here's the uh, here's the blue over here, and it's a blue and yellow. And I'm looking here at the yellow, and there's yellow and light green. So I know that these two are going to be paired up. So before I move it down to here, I'm going to pair up this yellow and light green with this yellow and blue. So what I'll do is just move this over here, pair it, and then move it back. And now I'm ready to uh, move it into position, this one into position down here. You know, I, I'm getting a healthy respect for people who manage to explain things well what they're doing as they're doing it. It's not easy. Anyway, so we'll move this into position down here. Move it down. Rotate 180 degrees. Move it back. And this also should be where it needs to be. So we've got this center paired, solved, paired, solved. And now we come to the dreaded last two centers.